Hello everyone and welcome back to Cood with the Italians. So Roman just uh, your face grew humongous while I wasn't looking, of course. Do? I didn't do anything, I swear. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna fix it. Uh, still the same, it's fine. Oh, I think it's because you started the screen share, that's why. And Skype decided For to sure. drop your video resolution as a result. <laughs> of course. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about Combo Breaker, your new library. Um, I Again, you've been here a bunch of times, so I don't know if it's necessary, but if you want to briefly introduce yourself for new viewers. Uh, yeah, sure. So my name is Romain Guy and I'm uh, a manager on the Android Toolkit team at Google. Uh, and I've been doing, doing Android since uh, 2007, uh, so it's been a while. And now my job is not to write code anymore, uh, but you know, from time to time I do find spare time to, uh, to do something fun. And I think that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I'm still impressed you do find the time to do that. <laughs> no, not very often, uh, but this one was something I've been wanting to do for over 10 years. Uh, and so it was always in the back of my mind and finally I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> it's going to be behind me. One of those things like yeah. knowing at the back of your head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. So, Ivan, do you want to do the Ivan thing? Yes, let's do the Ivan thing. So, uh, for the people that have joined for the first time, we have um, stickers and we have... Um, swag that you can buy on our store to support the stream. Uh, you can support the stream in uh, in, in a few ways. Uh, you can buy our t-shirts, uh, you can uh, subscribe to Twitch. If you have an Amazon uh, Prime subscription, you can subscribe for free. And so we, we get like $1 or something. Um, or you can subscribe on as a, as a coffee subscriber um, and uh, monthly you get basically to uh, support us and you can also win things like this, the, the holo sticker that we usually give away during our live streams. And yeah, let's keep it sweet because I want to check the library. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Okay, so uh, the library is here. I just put the link in the chat. So if you want to also check it out, folks, uh, Raman, do you want to explain what it's about and let me know when you want me to show your screen? Uh, yeah, so Combo Breaker, the, the name is uh, has almost nothing, I mean, kind of nothing to do with what it does. Uh, but basically, it's a library that lets you flow text around shapes. Um, so typically, the kind of stuff you would see, you know, in a newspaper kind of UI or honestly, like all over the way, right? Like you have text and embedded inside the text, very often you'll have images and your text nicely flow around the images. Um, it's uh, So it's something that's not possible out of the box on Android. Uh, I've seen a lot of people try to do it over the years. And you can fairly easily manage to do it if you simplify the problem enough. Uh, so if you assume that you know what you flow the text around is always rectangles, and if you don't have multiple styles, or you, know, you can put in a lot of limitations to simplify the prime, which is usually a smart thing to do. Uh, but I wanted to solve the prime more generally. Uh, and so I wanted to be able to flow text around anything, any shape. Um, and more importantly, I wanted the API to be as easy to use as possible. Uh, so that library is a composable function. So for Jetpack Compose, could make a view version, uh, but you know, I was being lazy. Uh, and in that composable, you can set text uh, with styles and then any child you put in that composable. So you can put any, really any child like that you can imagine in Jetpack Compose and text will flow around it. Uh, so I guess we can switch to, to my screen and I can show an example of how it works and what it looks Boom. like. Boom. Uh, screen is live. So let's, let me increase my font size quite a bit. Uh, this looks like you know, so much uh, on the I, I was looking yeah. at the Slido, and someone is asking to add shader effects. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we will, uh, even though that's not the point of the library, but uh, I will show an example with shaders, actually. Uh, right, so to use the library right now, uh, the first step is, you know, it's on Maven Central, so you can just add the dependency. Uh, it's listed on GitHub, it's called Combo Breaker. 
There's a separate library uh, if you want to use Material 3 uh, in Jetpack Compose. If you have your own design system, you can use a, a, a basic uh, widget instead. But here, to make it easier, we're going to use the, the Material 3 version. So the Composable is called a text flow. Um, and it's pretty simple to use. You just give it a sample text. And that sample text is an annotated string so that you build in Compose the way you, you would build any annotated string. Uh, so here, that's the typical Compose APIs. Now we're going to have a title, uh, a bunch of paragraphs. Uh, we like, you know, I am faking links by changing the color on some of the text. Um, and then when you said that, uh, you have the result on the right. It's just, you know, a bunch of text like you would expect from text view or basic text view or any of those components. What becomes interesting is when you do something like this. So the composable itself acts as a box layout. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best choice of a layout, but I want something simple. So it, it behaves exactly like the box API in Compose. Um, so if we add a button and we say, you know, we'll give it some text. Now, oh, sorry. I always get tripped by, by this one. Uh, that's how it works, All right? Uh, and we're going to center it. Uh, so we need a modifier, a line. We're going to put it in the center of the screen. And if I run that, come on, great, I'll wake up. Is uh, so because of last week we had uh, live, live edit. Would live edit help you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so actually, actually, you will see live edit work uh, in some of the changes I will make, which is actually which I nice. think is really cool when it works. So yeah, here you go. So here you have the button. You know, it appeared like in the center of the screen. It works like a button, and you can see that the text is flowing already around the button. Mm. Uh, so right now it doesn't look that great. Uh, but for instance, we can add justification to close those gaps between the button and the text. And see oh, nice. Right. And so you, you have that. Of course, a button is not, you know, typically the kind of stuff you would put inside text. So we're going to use, we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, we're going to use an image. So let's see, uh, bitmap equals remember, uh, Source. How come you're doing it this way? Sorry? Uh, why are you using uh, Bitmap Factory directly? Uh, I don't know. Is there a better way? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there was some reason to do it. I, I'm not sure. No, uh, no, no. It's just I, I'm used to using Bitmap Factory, so that, that's what I use. But, you know. From the view days or? Uh, from the view days, yeah. I mean, now there's bitmap decoder, which is a better API, but yeah. you know it's not available everywhere yet. So mm. uh, I still tend to use uh, to use this one. Uh, let's see. And I'm sure, like you know, in a real app, you would use like Glide or, or yeah. something fancier than than that. But you know, this is just a demo. Uh, all right. So we have our image. Uh, let's put it in the center of the text. All right. So now our text flows around it. Uh, but that looks a little silly, right? Like, because you have a lot of empty space uh, because of that image. But you can see, like, the text, you know, nicely does what it's supposed to do, uh, which that alone is nice. So if you were to put the image, you know, in the top left, uh, that would be your typical, you know, headline card that you see online or in the newspaper where you, you have an image and then the text starts uh, right next to it. Uh, so the library comes with a modifier, a set of modifiers called flow shape. Mm -hmm. So flow shape lets you do a few things. The first thing is Ooh. you can choose the flow type. So right now the flow type is called outside. So you can see that the text will flow on both sides of, of the image. But instead you can decide that you want to flow only to the right of it, uh, like this. So that's super helpful when you want, if we are to put the image on the left side, uh, it's to make sure that no text, you know, when, when the, the layout finds, finds space where to put the text, it might put text in places you don't want. So this is a way to like force the text to be on either side. Uh, eventually, I would like to add the ability to flow text inside the shape, uh, but that's, that's difficult to do. Uh, that's actually what I wanted to do at first, 
uh, but because it was hard, I decided to do it outside. Uh, first. <laughs> so you could have like a irregular shape and just put text inside of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but what's more interesting, one of the things, because right now every time there's a, a, a something to flow around, and here I'm using a single image, right? But you can have as many objects inside the text. They can be on the same line. They can be anywhere you want. The text will flow properly around all of those. Um, but because this is not a rectangular shape, we will want to 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 have a more interesting shape, right? To flow the text uh, around that. So we'll get back to this example. Um, we're going to start with a, a, a different example first. So that's where we're going to use shaders. Uh, so I, did, I already wrote a composable that, uh, that <laughs> uses a shader, and I called it the disco uh, composable. <laughs> so I did, not, I did not write that shader. Uh, I took it on shader toy, uh, so just FYI. But it will help me. Here we go. Um, oh, so wow. OK, so again, like we have this cool, you know, it looks weird it's just a bunch of like rotating lights but it's kind of nice but again the problem is that we have this rectangle right and that's not really helpful uh for the flow of our text so here we'd like to flow the text around this more or less oval shape so that's exactly what we can do with the uh, flow shape modifier uh, if i add this oh, and comment all right here we go so now we have the text that flows around perfectly around this this uh, oval shape. So the way this works is when you call the flow shape modifier, uh, you can either specify a path as a path object, or you can set a lambda that will return a path. And the lambda is useful because it gives you the size of the text container of the text flow. Um, sorry, here. It also gives you the size of the, the object itself. So in this case, like cell mm. size is the dimensions of the disco composable and size is the dimension of the text flow. And here what I'm doing is I'm creating a path, uh, creating an oval, and then I rotate the oval so that it matches the, uh, uh, the, the shape that we have here. But in, it, in, this case, it, in this case, it works because you knew that it was, uh, that the overall shape is kind of like an oval rotated 45 degrees. Right. Uh, and, and you could create the path dynamically, you know, over time, like as an animation, but that it's a very expensive layout to do all that stuff. So I would not recommend it, mm. but you could. Uh, one thing you can use to make it easier to, um, to figure out, like if your shape is right, uh, there's this parameter called debug overlay. When you set that to true, uh, when you click and drag, you're going to see the, the flow shapes that are used to, to flow the text <laughs> around. And so now you can see how like closely the text can follow the shape that we've defined. Uh, and the line here that we see, we're going to talk about this some more, but it basically emulates a line of text. And the yellow areas are the areas where the text will flow. Um, right. And I have a bug, actually. Because it's um, drawing the yellow twice, or? Uh, yeah, the fact that it's drawing the yellow twice here means that uh, I have a bug in the, <laughs> if text was exactly in that position, uh, you would see two lines of text on top of each other. Uh, and I think I know why I need to fix that <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, uh, and of course, like you can use, you know, any shape you want, like, right. It's a path. Uh, so you can, you can use an arbitrary shape, which leads us back to the original example of an image. Uh, I'm going to go back to the light theme. Uh, so the text should flow around this, you know, this microphone, right? But the problem is that creating the path for that is not easy. Uh, so you could go do that in a design tool and save an SVG, for instance, or vector drawable and load that and get the path out of it. Or you can use another API uh, that's part of another library I wrote called Pathway. And it has a neat extension function uh, on bitmap called to path. So you call that, we're gonna give it a margin. Uh, what is it? Oh no, it's flow shape, not path. Here we go. And why is it not happy? Uh, blah, blah, blah. No. Wrong kind of path. Here we go. See, oh, just, man. just updated. And now it flows precisely around the microphone. And if we use the debug view, 
we can see we have this shape that matches exactly the microphone in the image. Uh, so this is an interesting function that if you give it a bitmap using the alpha channel, so it's going to find the areas of the bitmap that are not transparent, uh, and you can set the threshold you want. Uh, and it's going to try to extract a, a contour that represents the shapes that it finds inside the uh, uh, inside the image. And you can find multiple shapes as well. It doesn't have to be a single one. And, and I'll show you an example of that. So that's that's what the API can do. Uh, and like I said, you know, you can you can have as many of those things as you want. Uh, so here we could add, you know, we could go back to our button, uh, or actually, you know, let's bring this back. Uh, I haven't tried, so we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, top start. See what does this do? Live edit. Oh, live edit did not kick off. Rebuild. There you go. I ah, see. There's the bug I was talk talking about. So I need to fix that. Uh, but it happens. It happens when the line of text touches exactly ah, okay. line, the original shape that's probably like horizontal or... But other than that... <laughs> <laughs> if you ignore that bit... If you ignore that bit, it, it, it works. Um, it's really so yeah, cool. That's, uh, that's Combo Breaker. So uh, uh, tomorrow okay. we're going to have a bug fix release just for, for you to know uh, that fixes that. And <laughs> I, I feel... I feel this is going to be another of those episodes where you say, oh, let me pass something, and I go, like, for fuck's sake, how <laughs> do you do this? <laughs> and, yeah, feel I feel pretty outside the conversation again. But, yeah, you know, I still love you. So, you, <laughs> more than, oh, man, this is so cool. This we're, is so cool. We are optimizing the, the streams for uh, even confusion levels. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I mean, it's getting worse and worse by... Uh, by <laughs> Every every Wednesday, I feel like I should do web. You know, I mean, <laughs> say, I, well, I should do more web. On the web, you already have those features, which is nice. Uh, but so yeah, here's another feature that 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 I, I put in the library. You can also uh, set the number of columns of text you want, uh, because you know it's nice to have columns. Wow. And again, Why not right. <laughs> yeah, uh, it turns out actually adding columns was the <laughs> was super easy compared to everything else. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, again, it's nice. Like you can see that the the you know the the shape is respected, like in both columns. Uh, oh, so. I I see the 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 path when you uh, convert the outlines to a path. You're just yeah. doing the segments that are. Yeah. So if you wanna now, we can chat about how this all works. If you're interested. Yes. Uh, and someone's asking, can you add padding around the shape? Uh, yes, on the flow shape uh, modifier, there's this margin uh, argument, and you can use it to, to specify how much padding you want around the shape. Currently, the way it works is pretty expensive. I want to do it differently. It works, uh, but it can be slow with very, very complex paths. Uh, so use at your own risk. Uh, it's super cheap on a rectangle. On a shape like this, it becomes more expensive. But hey, at least it works, <laughs> which is nice. When, when you say what... expensive, you mean that it will like suffer in a like scrolling scenario, or it's uh, just uh... no? It's when you do the so when you do the layout pass, uh, I have to if you specify a margin for the path, I have to expand the path, uh, and the way it works, it, it uses key APIs for that. Uh, and it really depends on how the path is constructed. Like sometimes it's it's fast, sometimes it's super slow, and it yeah it, it really depends on like nitty gritty details of like path construction. Um, well, it's, it's more like it's gonna take a moment to just pop on screen, basically. That's yeah uh, yeah exactly yeah. And, and overall, you know, this is not is not a super fast layout. Uh, I did some optimizations. There's still one one big optimization I have to do. But that involves rewrite, like backporting a pretty massive platform API. Uh, so I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, let, let, let's look at how it works. Uh, so I'm going to switch, I'm going to do some drawing. Uh, let's see if I can get that to work. Uh, all right. So just to give an idea of the overall algorithm. Uh, well, this is the famous high tech uh, iPad. <laughs> There. 
<laughs> yeah, which was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Uh, but hey, it's... I've never used Affinity Designer on the iPad. Uh, it's it's very very good. You should use. It. Right, I don't so have an iPad. The... That's why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, now you have an excuse. No. Um, <laughs> so so let's say we have a shape like this, right? And we want to flow our text uh, outside of it. Um, the first the first thing that the algorithm is going to do is simplify the path. Um, so it's it's something called flattening the path, and it's an API that's part of the platform. It's called Approximate. In the Android Core, Android X Core KTX extensions, we have a Kotlin extension called Flatten. And when you when you apply that to a to a path, it just returns a, a number of lines. So in this example, you know, roughly, you could imagine that we would simplify every one of those curves with like a bunch of straight lines. Uh, and this is how path rendering works usually inside uh, in CPUs. Uh, it makes things a lot easier to reason about. And here I'm, I'm only using a few lines, but in practice, you know, you're going to have a lot of lines uh, to, to approximate this path. But what's, in, what's interesting for us is that once we have those lines, uh, mm -hmm. we can, uh, sorry, I'm looking for my shapes. So let's say we have a line of text like this, and we're trying to figure out where we can flow our text. Give it a bit of color. There you go. So we have our line of text. So what we can do is look at all the lines from the path, the straight lines that intersect with the uh, with that with that line of text. And for every line that in, and then once we have that set of lines, so here we're gonna do you know we're gonna take this bit of line, we're gonna take this bit of line. So we need to clip them against the, 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 the rectangle that represents the line of text. Mm -hmm. So we're going to end up with like those four segments. So then we can look at the extremities of the segments. And we're going to find the mean and the max. And that will give us an area where we know that we don't want text, right? Like we don't want text like between those two green lines. So once we have that, we know that we can put text to the left and to the right of it. Um, it becomes a bit more complicated, like once you have multiple shapes on a single line, right? Like if there was another shape, let's say, uh, right here, we would have to, because we do that for each shape, we would have to subtract, you know, the areas of the, of the, the lines that we found that uh, overlap shapes, then that shape will have its own, you know, area like of, the, of uh, for instance, it will have its own green on the left. We'll want to make sure that we don't put anything inside another shape. So mm -hmm. anyway, there's a lot of work then to find the intersection between all those things. Uh, in the code, those those rectangles that represent where we can put text, I call those slots. So like here, that's one slot and that's one slot. Um, and then when we do the text layout, we basically just try to fit our text, not you know, in a line of text that's the width of the, 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 the composable itself, but in a series of rectangles like this that are that are called slots. Uh, so that's roughly how it works. Um, and of course, there's a lot of, uh, uh, of complication uh, in, in the actual code. Uh, so what's interesting, and I'm going to switch to the code. Uh, here we go. So that's the implementation. Uh, I'm going to run the official demo. Let's go greater. There you go. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the demo I use, you know, to test the thing. So you can change the number of rectangles. Uh, you can use non-rectangular shapes. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, this one is interesting. Uh, all those hearts come oh, okay. from a, they come from a single image, um, but that's just the the path extraction uh, that's able to find like. A bunch of shapes, not just a single shape. It extracts like all the shapes it finds in the image, uh, and you can, you know, turn <coughs> affination on and on or justification. So it's a, this this app is a good way of of testing the, the capabilities of the library. But anyway, what's interesting to us is uh, how the different parts work. Uh, so let's see. 
Uh, we're gonna look at uh, interval tree and flow slots and text layout. All right, uh, and actually geometry. Uh, so I said, uh, let me increase my font size. Let me know if it's uh, not big enough. So I mentioned that we have this extension in, in in Core KTX, I was using it at, at first, uh, but I stopped using it. So instead, I'm using the approximate function from the platform on the path. So that gives me an array of floats uh, that contain you know, those line segments. And what I do, like, you know, there's a bunch of borrow plate here, but basically you have those that, that line data. So I create path segments that are just straight lines. And I put them in, in what's called an interval tree. So when you have a line of text, uh, and you want to find the lines in the path that intersect that, that, rectang that rectangular area. So they're, they're showing in pink here in the debug mode. Uh, to do that quickly, because you know, in a shape like this one, you, have like, you can have thousands and thousands of lines. So we don't want to go through all of them. So instead, we use an interval tree. And an interval tree is a data structure. It's basically a red-black tree that lets you query uh, intervals uh, so given an interval, it will return the list of intervals that overlap in roughly n log n uh, complexity. So it's a really, really fast way to know, okay, for this given line of text, what are the, the segments I need to look at to figure out uh, where I can put text? Red black trees finally have real life application. I'm sure they have other real life applications. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> one that I but care about, let's say. Because <laughs> once once I build this interval tree, uh, and you know the, the whole code is here, it's like there's a ton of documentation online. It's not super complicated to implement. Uh, I ended up using it in in another place. Uh, so you never know. Like sometimes you know th <laughs> those those uh, data structures end up being super helpful. Uh, and the, the other place where I use it is, you know, when you build the annotated string, so you have all those styles. And what's difficult is the styles can overlap, right? They're spans. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you have, you have overlaps of styles where, like, you know, the text can be bold and have a certain font size. The problem is the APIs of the platform that measure text or even to draw text you can say, oh, here's a bunch of text, and by the way, figuring out, figure out all the, the, the style overlaps. You have yourself to like split those overlaps into success, several text runs that have unique, merge, like where you, merge, where you merge the styles in unique runs. And to do that, it's interesting because those spans are basically intervals. Um, and so you can reuse the interval tree to figure out like what, uh, what overlaps what. Uh, so th that made my life easier to be able to uh, to reuse that. Okay, fine, fine. There's more than one usage. <laughs> <laughs> I can count uh, two now. <laughs> so yeah, so you know, so that's the first step, right? Like I create this interval tree of of lines, uh, and then when I need to find those uh, where I can put the text, uh, so I, I need to loop, you know, I need to loop over the the, the shapes, and for every one of those shapes, I have an interval tree. And I say, okay, in the, oops, in that interval tree, can you give me like all the lines that that intersect my search interval? And the search interval is just the height of the of the line of text. Uh, and then from there, you know, you look at okay. every one of the interval, and we do like the min max I was showing uh, by mm -hmm. drawing. Uh, we clip the segments, and then when, once I have the min max, I can figure out the, the boxes. Uh, so that's that's basically all this code does. Look, there's beautiful ASCII art. Uh, oh wow. Explains. <laughs> that explains how we have to like merge some of the uh, some of the things we find, uh, and there might be a simpler way of doing all of that. Uh, I'd like to try a different approach, but but you know it works. Um, and then uh, the really hard part, uh, and that's that's the part that surprised me honestly, because when I started this, you know what I figured would be complicated was this right like was figuring out okay how do i find where i have to, where i can put text to the left and to the right of a shape uh the hard part turns out was the actual laying out of the text because uh, quickly you run into into a lot of complications because uh, you have to handle paragraphs and the columns and the styles and so on is this where you start pestering zach and uh, uh, and everyone else 
Not pestering them, hopefully, but I, I did run into, like, and I'm going to show, like, uh, I did run into a, a, a limitation, I would say, of the, of, of the platform APIs that makes mm. this not as optimal as it could be. So in the platform, we have this thing called uh, measure text dot builder. So when you create this, you basically do it for each paragraph, which is fine. You give it the text and you want to append style run. So for every, you know, change of style, you have to call, this is an extension, but you have to call append style run. And you mm -hmm. have to say, here's the paint and uh -huh. here's the, the length of text I want. And is it right to left and so on. And so, and, and it doesn't accept gaps. So that's why I have to use the interval tree to figure out, okay, for every character, I need to know the exact merge style uh, to be able to pass it to, to, the, to the builder. Um, but it's nice because it will do the hyphenation for you. Uh, then you can pass that to something called a line breaker. Uh, so you say compute line breaks, you give it the measure text, and then it will give you for every line, so you give it a width as well. And so for every line, uh, it will tell you, okay, is there a hyphen? Uh, what is the offset in the paragraph where I had to break the line? What is the width of the line? So it's it's exactly what you want to do this. The problem is the line breaker only understands one width. So it's meant to measure a paragraph, you know, like this in the top right, where, where, where every line has the same width. Yeah. So what I have to do is every time I find a, you know, a slot, like one of those yellow rectangles that has a different width as what I had before, I need to recreate a measured text and I need to redo the, the line breaking. I need to recall compute line break. So technically what could happen is that if the width is changing every line, I will create one new paragraph uh, oh, measure okay. text and line breaker for every line. And there's no way to tell the line breaker to stop measuring after one line. So it will measure all the lines that come after. So in the worst case scenario, it's like, you know, n times n minus one times n minus two times. Um, so it's expensive. Um, thankfully, under the hood, there's, you know, there's caches in the platform for the word measurement. So it's not, it's actually pretty fast. Uh, I also have some optimizations in my own code to avoid it. but the biggest offender is you pass a char array to the measure text builder, but you cannot give it an offset. Mm -hmm. So every time I, ma I manage to like, you know, place part of my text, I cannot tell the measure text, okay, now I want you to start at the end of, you know, this word usage. Yeah. I have to create a new char array. And That's very expensive. It is pretty expensive, and that's why I have optimizations where I try, you know, when the width doesn't change, I I, I keep using this, reusing the same objects and so mm -hmm. on. Um, now the other thing is that those APIs I think are only in API level twenty nine. Uh, so to keep backporting uh, combo breaker, I will have to like go do all that work myself, and <laughs> it is not trivial uh, to do the hyphenation, to take into account, you know, like all the measurements and so on. Uh, and so far I've been dragging my feet, but I point, just I realized to... that uh, I forgot to ask you to uh, increase the font size. Oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, go. Thank you. So for, for now, this will probably stay API 29. So for now it says API twenty nine. Uh, yeah, first I wanted to like you know fix all the bugs uh, and yeah. finish a few features. Like for instance, I would like to add ellipsizing. So like when mm -hmm. when I reach like I have more text than can fit on screen, I would love to have an option where you can ellipsize. I if you follow me on Mastodon the other day, I just posted like git restore dot, uh, dot try again. It's because I had spent the evening trying ellipsizing to work, and I got in a place where like it almost worked, but it didn't, and my code was so messy. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna <laughs> forget my current version and I'm nah. gonna try again. Uh, the other thing uh, I have to do, which is also gonna be uh, not trivial, is supporting Baidai. Um, so I do support right to left layout. So for instance, when you position, you know, the when you tell the the text flow that you want to flow the text to the left or the right, you can say start and end, and it will honor the right to left layout. But if you have bidirectional text, so like, you know, Arabic, for instance, I don't handle that right now. Uh, and that's another level of complexity that I need to deal with. Uh, and yeah, text text is really hard uh, and it's very complicated. The, the other thing I want to do is like, so for justification of text, um, 
it's interesting, right? Like the, the way justification works is fairly simple or else like, you know, the width of, of your line of text, you know, how much you know, space you have to fit your text. And you know how much, how wide the text you were actually able to fit is. So if we look at this line here, you know, you have advice dot uh, hy dash, and we have space left at the end. So when your text is smaller than the space that you have available, you can do justification. And we have really nice APIs on Android to do that. All you have to do is you count the number of spaces that you have. Uh, you divide your available space by the number of spaces that gives you a number, right? It's like, how much do you want to stretch every space? And then on the paint object, uh, let me find it. Uh, no, not that file. Uh, on the paint object. Can you increase the text size, please? Uh, yeah, first I find the... Yep. First, let me look for the... Uh, where do I do that? Uh, Sorry, I kept refactoring the code and I lost track of <laughs> <laughs> where I put stuff. Classic. Uh, paint, paint. I don't know, somewhere. Anyway, on the paint object itself, uh, you can set the, the value you compute. You can just set it on the paint and at draw time, the paint will take care of stretching the spaces. So that's nice and super easy and it works, but sometimes it creates spaces that are too wide, you know, to look like elegant or nice, like there's too much space here. Uh, so th that could be solved by, you know, instead of using the line breaker I mentioned, the problem is that it's not aware of my form of layout, so it doesn't always hyphenate in the right place. But another technique is to increase the space between the characters instead. Um, so something I would like to do is like slightly increase maybe by a max of like 10 to 20 percent the space between the characters and then use the rest as stretching mm. space it will make the text look better uh, but it's made difficult because there is an api for that on paint but instead of specifying the stretch that you want between the characters in pixels it's in em uh, so oh. the, right and of course the ems depend on the style of the so it's like you have to look at all the text runs, figure out get their si the size of DM for each one of those, and yeah. And I guess uh, you might also have problems with things like ligatures, where you have two separate glyphs together and one. Uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, I know that's a good point, but I think you know with the APIs provided by the platform, like uh, counting, you know, they will be counted as glyphs, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay. Uh, but 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 the, the the whole point is you know so much goes uh, into the tech stack. And if you ever look at the implementation you know, of, of the tech stack on Android, like it, it is a lot of work to do this well. And I know we all take it for granted, right? Because it's just text. Uh, but yeah, the, the amount yeah. of complexity that goes into making that work reliably is, is pretty mind boggling. Yeah. So I'm always in awe of like what the text team does. Uh, and we're not even thinking about the gazillion other alphabets and uh, languages and everything. We're still thinking about, you know, the base case, which is Latin English, which is relatively straightforward, right? Yeah. Well, but even relatively. there, like, you know, for, for, for use case like this, um, and actually I still have a, I still have a limitation slash bug I need, I need to address, but um, so when I look up how much space I have available, right? Uh, I need to know the height of the, the line of text uh, because the height of line of text, since we match against what the, the, the shapes have, will directly influence you know, how much space we actually have available. Now, that's fine when the text is like this and you know it's basically the same height everywhere. Yes. But what if you know one of the words, like the word though here, was like twice the font size? Hmm then suddenly you can't assume that. So the real algorithm uh, that I'm partially doing right now, I think there are cases where you... Actually, did I solve it? Yeah, I think I fixed it. Uh, yeah, so what you have to do is like, you know, you, you try and then you realize like, oh crap, like the line of text is higher than I thought it would be, <laughs> so I have to try again, which can change the line of text again. Uh, and yeah, and that's why like text layout can be expensive uh, and slow, especially when you start doing stuff like this. Uh, which is why I would not recommend animating the shapes uh, because... So are you measuring the text um, 
to like using the the canvas apis to uh to know how tall the line is or are you just assuming it and then checking afterwards uh yeah so what i'm doing is i'm ah i see okay yeah so so i track like once i've merged the the styles for a given paragraph uh i can grab the the textile object that you know in compose then I can create a paint for that style. Uh, yeah, and there's a whole, there's a lot of work happening here to create the paint, but basically you create a paint, I, I cache those paints, and then I use that paint to know like uh, uh, how, how big the, uh, the line should be. Um, but yeah, again, the problem is that you may have to do this several times, which is, the, which is where the, the, the complexity comes. And, and more than that, uh, you know, since you, you you may be trying several times, you also want to avoid the case where like you fall in a loop mm -hmm. where like you keep trying over and over again. Uh, and, and I had a few of those early on where like in some cases the layout would just hang. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and uh, another bit that's that can be that's interesting is you know so extracting shapes uh, from images. That's using a an algorithm uh, or at least. Uh, uh, a form of algorithm. Uh, sorry, someone's asking a question. Uh, will this handle font span? I don't know what you mean by font span, but uh, maybe changing typeface. I guess. Yeah, you can change like uh, it's your your traditional annotated text string. So you can change color, style, font face. Uh, you know anything you want on the text. Like it just uh, it just works. Um, yeah, so, so the, the algorithm to extract a shape, I use something called march, marching squares, uh, even though I'm not exactly using it the way it's supposed to be used. Uh, but it's very interesting. You basically have a window of a two by two pixels that you, that you slide over every pixel on, on, in the bitmap. And when you look at four pixels at a time, there's only like 16 possible configuration of those pixels because we're looking only at the alpha channel. Like, is it opaque or is it transparent? And based on the combination of the pixels, like, you know, if you have two transparent pixels on the left and two, two opaque pixels on the right, that's a vertical line. Uh, so you keep creating like tiny, tiny lines uh, in those two by two areas of the bitmap. So you end up with like uh, a contour of the bitmap, uh, but it's a lot of lines, right? Because that's those pixels are tiny. So then there's a second step where there's a simplification step where it looks at, at lines uh, next to each other. And if their angle is less than a given threshold, so by default, I think I use 15 degrees, it just collapses the line together uh, to simplify the, the shape. Uh, you can see it happening right here. It's a little bit hard to see on your screen probably, but uh, at the bottom, you know, the, there's a curve in the, in the microphone. But if you look at the pink All right, lines, yeah. you can see there's a, there's a straight line. So that, that's part of the simplification. Uh, but the APIs uh, I give you let you control. You can say like, please don't simplify the, the path. I want like full precision, mm. uh, which of course is going to make everything else more expensive. So you know, maybe don't do that. Does this um, uh, tracing happen on the on the main thread? Does it happen on? Uh... Uh, so that is up to you. Uh, it's when you call this two path uh, extension on. Okay. On the bitmap, uh, so I leave that. You know, if the app decides where it calls that. Uh, <laughs> not, not my problem. Not my problem. I solved the other problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not happening in the cloud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, look, I, I wanted to, to optimize it a little bit more. For instance, by multi-threading it. Uh, the problem is that it really depends on some images. It's not going to be necessary, and so I, I think it's better. It's like call that from a worker thread or call it at a point in your app where you can, you can afford that. Uh, but by all means, yeah, please do that ahead of time. Like don't call, you know, in the previous example, like a project, I called two paths in the flow shape modifier. Uh, don't do that there because it's going to be invoked in, on every layout. So do it ahead of time mm. uh, and, and don't do, do, and don't do it too often. So in like um, in an and, effect or something when the, the bitmap changes. Yeah. Uh, and you can see here the parameters, so you can set the, the threshold of alpha, so to control what's considered opaque or transparent, mm -hmm. and you can choose the angle uh, that's used for simplification of the path. Uh, and instead of going to path, so that's going to give you a single path for the image. So in the case of the hearts, for instance, it's going to be a little weird because uh, actually let's change the 
uh, let's see. So, so I'm going to change this code here to return a single path. Oops. Uh, uh, list of. Uh, what oh, dot? All right. So, so when you find only a single path, uh, the problem is that the the layout algorithm will treat well, will treat it as a single path. So, ah, uh, uh, okay. so yeah. See, so like for instance, the, the, this empty space between those two hearts. Because it's inside the, the, the path, it's inside the shape. Yeah. It's not going to try to put text there, right? So it's really tr like the shape is actually something like this. You know, it goes around. It's really the maximum outline uh, mm -hmm. of all the path inside. So that's why, like, depending on the content of your bitmap, uh, you might want to call the version that's two paths with an S. <laughs> it gives you a list of paths, uh, and then it will behave like uh, it will behave as you would expect. Is it? More expensive, or should? Uh, it is more expensive. Yeah. Uh, is it more expensive? I As in, think... does it make sense to always call two pads? Uh, yeah. No, you can call two pads. Actually, what happens internally is that when you call the version that that where you only have one path uh, in the flow shape modifier, mm -hmm. internally it creates a list of one path anyway. Ah, okay. Uh, so as far as the text layout is concerned, it's the same, uh, except with the added complication that the more shapes you have on a single line of text, the more expensive the algorithm becomes. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the path extraction, it's basically, it should basically be the same cost. Uh, okay. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it should, yeah it's, it's the same cost. Uh, I was so, mostly thinking of a scenario where you're applying this to images that come from the back end or something and you don't know in advance. So is it? Yeah. Yeah, you, you could you could totally do that. Uh, it's not a big deal. It, it, it was more like because sometimes maybe the behavior of you know not having text between those. Uh, yeah, those you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, but I guess you can also sort that with the margin. So if you have a big enough margin, then the text will yeah. not go in between unless there's really a lot of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a good example is like. Uh, for instance, uh, I actually don't know what I, I should try the the getting multiple paths from those bitmaps because I don't know if maybe I would try to put text you know in those little holes. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. it's not going to work because the text is is too big. But the algorithm will try, uh, and you know that just makes the algorithm a bit more more expensive. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, yeah, so that's that's basically the the way it works. Uh, and so on GitHub, uh, if you want to to look at it, uh, and if you want to you know fix it or improve it, <laughs> please. If you want to support yeah. bidirectional text, uh. <laughs> I, I was I was thinking about you know the the help that you will need to push this thing uh, you know forward in a let's let's be compatible with a lot of stuff and support a lot of stuff. Would it make sense to or do you see any? possibility to add this to a companist in a way uh, that you know you can you can get a bit more support and then this thing eventually is going to be swallowed <laughs> by jetpack and it's you, you know what i mean right yeah, I mean, yeah no it's bit... something it's something i would love to see in jetpack eventually uh but you know the reason i did it like as a separate project and on, on personal time is also because the uh uh, our text team is busy. We have a lot of other things that we need to do before this could become a priority. Uh, so hopefully someday, but at least for now, you know, if you really need something like this in your app and if that's good, if what it does is good enough, um, then by all means, at least there's something, there's, there's an answer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for sure. If I, if I, if I need something like this, I wouldn't be able to even start building something like this. So for me, the library will be uh life saving for instance then we we can no 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 but i'm serious but you can start thinking about or discussing oh yeah there is a glitch here the space is too too wide and then the designer you know it's just gonna and then you need to 
but this is going to be definitely the first step for me if I need to do something like this, because there's no way that I can pull this off by myself. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm grateful for the library. So. Yeah, and again, like I think, you know, the, the typical use case is not going to be something, you know, like, like this, right? Uh, it's going to be more like you have a scrolling list of cards and you just want yeah. to have a, a headline and a bit of body of text and an image or two that the text flows around. So those, those are the easy use cases for, for this kind of API. Because I mean, I also I also think can they do it on iOS? You know, that's the thing, right? <laughs> There's also well, I mean, I'm I'm I don't know because, actually. You know, yeah, we we work with this stuff. If this designer comes up with something like this, and you say, oh yeah, I have a library on Android, and then the iOS people are just gonna hate you, so this <laughs> won't fly, right? Uh, so I don't see I don't uh, see the problem with that. It's their well, problem. Fair enough, but you know, it's you, usually you, the other I mean, way around. So you're like, well. Sucks oh, to be you this guess, time. <laughs> guess, I mean, now you know how I feel most of the time when you know. I mean, I I, I need to spend a week, and it for you is just one line, and I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so yeah, um, but I will be curious. I mean, if they can do it, if they are using because you know a lot of this um, algorithms, right? I mean, they they could be considered generic, right? So it's oh, more yeah, like. So I, I will be interesting to see if they have like a, a swift implementation or if this stuff can be extracted in like a Kotlin multi-platform library, uh, like a bits that, that yeah, you, but I there is a lot of platform here. So yeah, I, I thought about the multi-platform aspect, it's, uh, it's possible, but it does rely on the platform offering, you know. Yeah. Like having access to the content of a path and uh, doing some of the live marking. So, but the more the more this thing gets backported, the more code it will have in on its own, uh, and then the more it can become multi-platform. But this oh, could yeah. work like, like on. If you go if you go below twenty nine, you need to bring in the code that you have for free yeah. on twenty nine. At that point, you can probably yeah also push it yeah. to iOS and YOLO. The, the, the question is how much code you need to bring, right? Because when you look at the tech stack, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you go too deep in the backport, you quickly end up requiring like the text shaping uh, libraries, which are native libraries to do like shaping of, you know, ligatures and all the locales and all that stuff. And maybe you don't want to go there. <laughs> you yeah. probably don't want to go there. No, you don't. Okay. And also, I, I don't think I can do the work of like an entire team who works on text by myself. Like that's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but it's well, not going to happen. Like uh, this theoretically should be portable at least to desktop, right? Because you have still Skiko, for example. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that, that should, uh, so that, that, that should work on, on desktop, uh, I think. I don't know if the APIs are the same. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things. There's a couple of places where I use like Android dot APIs, mm -hmm. uh, so which are not compose specific. So Let me open an issue in real time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can you can watch the issue get uh, get no activity for quite a while. <laughs> I know. But still, it's at least it's there. Yeah, because I, I know at uh, least one place that I might want to use this at some point eventually. Good. <laughs> I'm glad if someone uses it. <laughs> uh, let's see. There, I think there are some questions. Yes. Yeah, Should we start questions. going through those? Yeah, yeah sure. Let's do questions. Ivan, go for it. Oh, I, 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 I need to were... open the issue. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me refresh the thing. Oh, it logged me out. Oh, God damn it. Give me a second. Of course it did. I thought you were showing <laughs> the, the fancy thingy. OK, so. First question, what are the performance gotchas for something like this? Any scenarios in which to definitely avoiding using it? Uh, we, yeah, we I mean, touched like it a bit, but you know. Yeah, so the, the, the complexity of the algorithm scales with the number of shapes on a single line and with the number of lines uh, inside the shapes that are on that line uh, or, or segments uh, in that shape. Um, so it's hard to say exactly like where you should definitely avoid it, but you know, 
what I measured is that on the Pixel 6, uh, like this demo here, like the, the two columns uh, with you know, a couple of like fairly complex shapes and so on, I think I measured it to measure, to do the layout in about 16 milliseconds. So, you know, it's gonna miss a frame, uh, but that's at the same time, that's kind of like a full screen of text and, you know, fairly complex, like a fairly complex scenario. Yeah. Uh, so if you're gonna use like, you know, smaller cards, uh, that, that would be better. Uh, and and I would love to hear from, from folks, you know, as they try to use it, like where it doesn't really work uh, in production apps. Uh, because I'm sure there, there's stuff that could be done to, to make it uh, faster. Like maybe there, we, there could be a way to do the layout like ahead of time and to remember the layout. You know, there's uh, things I haven't tried myself. So we, we need more data to be sure where, where we can speed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but this is, not, and I agree with you that this is like, it's, a, it's an incredible demo ish uh demo -y layout because probably you wouldn't have something like this uh in an app but i'm no designer but this looks like you know made on purpose to actually uh show what what you can do probably with a more um yeah i mean something like this probably uh, but it's the same layout basically but i i you get You're the point right that. if you if, yeah, well, but then I, from something like, like this, I will expect animation and I will probably die. Uh, to, so, uh, I, and I have a question about the, the animation part because somebody is asking, can we animate something inside text flow? Uh, I mean, it depends what you mean by something, uh, but it's, you know, it's a regular composable. So anything you animate will work. Uh, some things will cause a relayout. So let's say, you know, like I was saying, if you animate the shape of one of the children, uh, we have to do a full relayout, which might not look great, especially because, you know, you can see what happens, right? Like when the layout changes, mm -hmm. like the text will jump, like uh, it's not gonna animate like yeah. the, the change in text. Um, so that's probably bad for the user. And also with this kind of layout, uh, Look at the text, like for instance, the position of like the beginning of this paragraph, like the use of the hyphen. If you just change the shapes, it moves to a very different place. Yeah, uh, and that's the nature of you know feeding text uh, in a complex layout like this. So I would not recommend it just in terms of like usability. But if we, if what you want to do is I don't know like uh, animate the, the the image inside like. As long as it doesn't change its shape, that's fine. Uh, I mean, you saw the example yeah. earlier with the uh, the shader, right? Yeah, with the disc. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, where is it? Uh, this one. Ah, it doesn't have, it doesn't have the shader anymore. But yeah, like you, you can animate stuff inside. The, 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 yeah. any but if you uh, if you animate something like text color in a span, that's not going to cause a relay out, right? It uh... or will it? Actually, it, I th no, it will because that changes the textiles and it has to like redo the merging of textiles and all that stuff. All right. Like, yeah, I would have to chat with the text team to see uh, how they're handling it or if it's handled better in the, the basic like text uh, text components. Because uh, in theory, you know, in the end, all I have is like a bunch of paints. So if there was a, mm -hmm. a fast way of like matching a uh, this animation to the to the final paint, then yeah, you could do that. Yeah, in my head, I was thinking of the metrics affecting spans versus no metric affecting spans. If yeah, uh, but I don't know if that uh, that is uh, a distinction that exists in the compose version. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen anything like not at least with the concept of textile. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I don't know, uh, but that's a good question. Um, next question. What happens if I put the text inside a scrollable column? Uh, that's fine. I mean, this is just... It, it, it scrolls? Like a, yeah, I mean, it's a box it layout, scrolls. right? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it, it's no different than another, than another composable. Uh, so you're not going to scroll the text, you know, you're not going to scroll like the, the columns inside the text flow. You, like I can't scroll this mm. and have it like flow nicely around the, 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 the little cloud image. Uh, I guess the, the, maybe the question meant to ask something like a lazy layout. 
Yeah, I mean, here, like, you know, I put my text flow inside the column. Like, if I make, if I make that scrollable, then, I mean, text flow is just a child mm. of the column. It's, it will work. Yeah. As in, if you're, if you're in a lazy column, will that cause performance issues when it's added to the composition? Uh, probably not, because I would imagine that, you know, if it's in a lazy column, the, uh, each, each one of those text flows will be fairly small. I mean, you're not going to have like a super comp like large amount of text, you know, lots mm -hmm. of shapes. So, and again, that's, that's where the, 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 the cost comes from, right? It's like the more text you have, the more shapes you have. Uh, so that should be fine. We have two questions that I guess are fairly related to each other, uh, which is, will text be placed inside a donut shape if the interior hole is big enough? And then does the library support concave? shapes yeah no so it's not going to support that uh because the way it works so if you look at this cloud you know even if the hole in the middle here uh, oops uh it looks for the mean and the max of the mm -hmm. shape so text is not going to go in the middle um that becomes a, a more complex problem and it's it's akin to solving the sh text inside the shape uh and it's interesting as i was researching that um i found that CSS has support for exactly this, for flowing oh. text outside of shapes. And you can specify, I want to float, you know, it's a little different to use float left, float right, uh, typical CSS stuff. And they have the beginning of a spec to sh flow text inside a shape, but all the browsers have decided together, it's like, yeah, let, let's do that later in, <laughs> in a future level of CSS because it's hard. <laughs> And I was also trying, because you know, a lot of tools, like I was using Affinity Designer before, or if you use Adobe Illustrator, or like a lot of tools have this ability. And I was trying to, to understand from using them, like, okay, how do they solve this problem? Because text inside a shape uh, has a lot more complications. So I, I mentioned earlier, like one of the difficulties, like when the height of the text changes suddenly in the middle of the line, you know, it, 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 it can have consequences but even more so inside of a shape, right? Like you can imagine if I start flowing text inside the shape here, let's say, you know, A, B, C, and it fits, okay, fine. But now let's say that the B is a, is much bigger. It's like, well, I can't do it here. Now I have to like have a, a bigger line of text. And, you know, and then when things are concave, like you have like multiple spans, like here, like you would have to have multiple spans inside the shape. It's a... I, the only way I can think of solving it is expensive and it would be part of the algorithm. The, the complexity would be linear with the number of pixels, of, uh, linear with the height of a line of text in pixels. Uh -huh. um, because it basically becomes a prime of, one way of solving it is the way paths are traditionally rendered on the CPU where you, you cast a ray from the outside and when you hit, you know, uh, a segment, you you look at, at whether the segment is going clockwise or counterclockwise, mm. and you do plus one minus one. So that's the you've probably heard of even odd and non-zero uh, when you feel path, and that tells you whether you're inside or outside the path. So you can do that for a given line of pixel, right? Like you can easily figure out, okay, I'm inside, I'm outside, I'm inside, I'm outside. But for line of text, you need to know you need to know that for a beam, not a ray. So you could do it for every pixel in the line, but let's say you have a little concavity, concavity yeah, it's concave like on a couple of pixels here, then you have to like look at the inside outside representation you have and find the rectangles that mm -hmm. is safe for all those lines. And yeah, it, it becomes it becomes messy. Uh, and, and it's funny because when I was working on that, you know, some folks were excited on Twitter or Mastodon and they were like, oh, I hope you, you make it work better than in Photoshop or that in, in Word. <laughs> and now that I've done it, I'm like, no, I get why it, it, it looks buggy in those tools is because it's freaking hard to do it right uh, and, and fast for that matter. Uh, one thing I would like to look at is tech slash LaTeX. Uh, because it has this feature, and I don't know, and I usually tech and LaTeX do things really well. Uh, so I would love to like understand the implementation and see if uh, if there's something to be learned from it, or maybe maybe you know maybe there are limitations on on what you can do, and maybe they have the same issues that everybody has. I don't know. Anyway, I would love for that to work, uh, but it's not easy. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, I imagine, I imagine like Adobe having like fifty people on this shit, and now you are alone in your spare time, and people asking, "Oh, can you make it better?" And you're like, "No." Or maybe, no. Or maybe I'm just too stupid. You know what? Just fuck you. No, yeah. I don't know. If <laughs> or, or maybe it's a number of people, but maybe I'm just too stupid to like, you know, figure yeah, out. Yeah, sure. That's uh, <laughs> that's the high probability there. Mm -hmm. No, but I. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to to hear that. It works on LaTeX, and you know it, it's kind of buggy on other solutions. Considering that LaTeX is like a, a million years well, old, so, so the thing is, LaTeX is not interactive, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, it runs the offline. It's, it's, it's compiled, so I think probably you you can pull it off if you can do well, you know things. The, the on stuff, a batch. What I was getting at is that what feels like buggy behavior might only feel buggy when it's interactive, right? It's like you type your text and because you added one extra letter or you change the font size, then all your text moves around. But maybe that's the only way it works. And in LaTeX, you're not going to have this issue so much because it's no. not interactive. So you don't see the, you know, those massive changes. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I gotta say, I haven't tried like flowing text inside the shape in LaTeX in like 20 years. Uh, so maybe I just <laughs> remember it better than it was. <laughs> Or maybe it is good. I don't know. I should look at it. I have the books behind me that you know about, like from Donald Knuth about <laughs> writing text. So maybe I should read that. Maybe he talks about it. <laughs> maybe Roman, the solution is uh, machine learning. We have TPUs yeah. on phones, right? Just uh, just use that. Train a model. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so so you you go from uh, only API twenty nine to only Pixel phone. That's it. The, your, the library I mean... is just device constrained and. Yeah, I like oh, I like the idea. If that's yeah, if I want to make sure that you know nobody will ever use it in their apps, like yeah, yeah. start shipping a ma uh, machine learning model with the library. It's only a few megabytes. Yeah, yeah. no, but it's also uh, it's also something that you know to to do this right. If we want it in Compose and in the view system, we may the, the right answer also that we may have to do it inside uh, to add new APIs in the platform uh, to make something like this easier. Uh, even to do what I did, right? Like, uh, there, there is, what is it? Um, what was I doing in, cause you know, I wrote that library. So the library I mentioned earlier pathway, uh, where you can extract shapes. Mm -hmm. I, I also wrote that originally to be able to iterate over the content of a path because that's not an API that's in the platform. Right. Uh, and it does like ungodly things, uh, to make that happen. Uh, <laughs> Like really, I don't know if we ever talked about it on, on this show, but yeah, what it does is really, really strange, um, but it works. And and the problem is that, you know, sometimes you can, you can f find out a solution like this, but sometimes, you know, there's nothing you can do and you may end up having to rewrite like line breaker or, and maybe that means you have to like bring so much of the text tag that maybe it's not worth it. I don't know. Um, but would uh, and then you know people will start complaining about the size of the library, and then you know you get you get yeah. angry. I mean, I get annoyed with this kind of stuff. Yeah, I know it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough thing. So you know, at least you know, right now I have something that does work most of the time uh, and can reasonably help folks in some situations. So that's that's already a good start. Uh, it's definitely not like the final answer to this problem. Far from it. Uh, but you know. At least there's something. But is there any uh, Skia or, well, I guess Skia would be the interface at the platform level. Is there any API that Skia does have that you would want to have exposed in uh, in order to take uh, advantage of? It's not really Skia. It's more like, uh, you know, things like hyphenation. Uh, mm. Would that be half buzz? Uh, so no, uh, so half buzz. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if we do the hyphenation in half buzz. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar enough with the, the tech stack and the tech team. If they're listening to us right now, they're probably screaming. Uh, but uh, hyphenation is somewhere in the platform. It's not that complicated, but it's still like complicated. Uh, half buzz is somewhat exposed. We have Baidai APIs. There's there's mm -hmm. Java text that Baidai. There's uh, Android text that Baidai. I think. So at least there are APIs we can use. I don't know what the API levels are. So there are some bits and pieces that are exposed. The, the, the problem is more what I've run into a couple of times, which totally makes sense given why those APIs were, what those APIs were designed for, but like, you know, that line breaker, 
uh, in that measure text, right? Just having an offset for the char array mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. being able to tell the line breaker, hey, don't bother measuring more than one line. That alone would like make a huge difference for me. But you know, it makes sense. Those APIs are the way they are because they were meant for something else and mm -hmm. they're good at that. Uh, but so that's also why it's interesting, right? To try these kind of experiments because it it helps you find potentially gaps in your APIs that you know you didn't realize you had or. Yeah, because uh, uh, nobody was uh, crazy enough to go ahead and implement yeah. this before. Yeah, I didn't want to say that, but okay, <laughs> now it's 100. I, I plus one that, you know, because you need to be very, very brave and you need to have a lot of background knowledge to do this kind of stuff. I believe uh, that it's not for everybody. And... Yeah. No, exactly. And, uh, and it's you, fair. Uh, one thing that's interesting, like this, this, this char, right? it's something that I've learned and I'm sure many of us have learned the hard way uh, over the years. When I design an API detection array, now I always try to remember to also take an offset as a parameter because, you know, sometimes that's what the caller yeah. wants, right? Like yeah. maybe I've pre-allocated a large array and whether it's for reading or writing, like, you know, if I give you an array for output, I would like you to start putting the data at some point Offset in the array. Yeah, and save you an array copy later down later in the code. Yeah. 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 Um, one, so anyway. One thing though with those APIs is that now if you write them in Kotlin, you should also put default values to take the entirety of the yes. array. <laughs> so the default is you just take the array and it's fine, but if you need to change it, then you can change it. Actually, the way I like to do it sometimes is uh, is more like so you have a function that returns an array. Uh, and the optional parameters are the, an array that's allocated for you by default and mm -hmm. an offset. And so if you don't give an array, then we're going to allocate, but if you care and, re and return it, and if you care about allocations, you're going to give an array and we'll return the same array. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, so yeah, still lots to do, lots of bugs to <laughs> fix, uh, still trying to find like the time and the courage <laughs> to, <laughs> to dredge through that. Maybe you uh, need to write to read those books behind you. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the other thing I'd like to do, uh, or is it, um, because right now it's uh, it's really basic. The the so I followed the the, the text APIs from from Compose, uh, which I really like. They're they're, they're pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But there's a there's a text flow layout result. Um, so when you create a text flow, you can can you zoom in, please. Uh, well, you, you, you register Lambda so that we give you back, I, I give you back the, the result of the layout. So right now, the only results I give you are what is the total height of the text that I uh, laid out and what is the last, the offset of the last character I was able to put in the layout. Mm -hmm. So at least, you know, like if you wanted to do, you know, multiple pages, let's say in a, a view page or equivalent, on the second page, you would know at what offset to start uh, mm -hmm. to start the layout. But you know, uh, this is like very basic. I would love to say, okay, for every column, here's the number of lines. For every line, like where does it, like the x and y coordinates and the start and end offset, and you know, like all the information that you might want about the layout uh, would be nice to return because I have all that, that information. I just need to like give it back. <laughs> uh, and actually, and speaking of offset, I think I've you know. Uh, yeah, look at that. I, 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 myself, I didn't do this, but uh, I let you pass a string or an annotated string, but I don't let you give me an offset to say... Can you make it stop. bigger? Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't let you spe specify an offset to tell you, like, so that you can tell me, hey, please start at a mm. position that's not zero in the string. So, you know, <laughs> maybe I should add that. Yeah. You want an issue for that? <laughs> uh, you can always call dot substring or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's 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 all of it. I think we have uh, one last question, um, sure. folks. If you do have other questions, now is the time to put them in. Um, meanwhile, if there was an event that caused the image to change, would TextFlow be able to adjust to the new image? Uh, yeah, as long as you modify the uh, the. The, the path uh, if you have a non rectangular path if you if you keep the the, the default rectangle path that's computed by uh, textflow then all you have to do is change your image and 
I mean, Textflow doesn't need to care about it. Uh, it might cause a relayout if the, the image has a different size. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you change the shape, obviously it has to redo a layout. But yeah, it's... Uh... So so if if you go on the the demo and where, where there is the the image with the canyon, it was the other one, it's the, uh, the rect. Yeah. So basically if I swap the image of the canyon with something else that is still rectangular, that's pretty okay. So it's probably you have a, a bit of yeah, a I mean, flashing on the text, kind of. I mean, not so, even. So, so there should be flashing, but like when, when I when I click this checkbox, I mean you can see the code right here. Like I'm, I'm saying, you know, if the box is checked, uh, use this image. Otherwise, use this image. Uh, so it's just your traditional compose, uh, and it does the same inside the uh, flow shape for the shape. So you know, I mean, it does work. Uh, creates it causes a layout, but that's it. Uh, how do you, oh, I guess, the question is, for the drop cap, you have the, the T there. Um, yeah. Can you get the, like, could you theoretically be able to get the, the contours of the T and just hug it with the text? Uh, yes, uh, there's an API for that uh, on Android, <laughs> on Paint. The problem I ran into was, because I, I tried to do exactly that, um, but the problem I ran into is uh, I, I wanted to have a, a composable where I could I would draw only one letter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I was having a really hard time positioning that one letter uh, using just the text composable. Uh, and it's because the font, in this particular case, the font I'm using apparently has built-in padding, uh, and ah. the built-in padding was causing it to be shifted. But yeah, otherwise, uh, if you look on Paint, uh, I forget, but there's there's an API. It's like get something path. Uh, you, you, it, it can return the the outline of your text as a mm -hmm. path, um, and then you can so just yeah. use that directly. Yeah, here I'm using a bitmap, uh, but you could use like a text composable, and if you want to hug the T, or you know, or you can do like image extraction, uh, like we do with the non rectangular shapes as well. Let me see. I'm looking up the documentation. Get field path? No, that's a different uh, thing. No, get field path is something else. Uh, it's but the fact is a different thing. Get text path. Yes. Uh, get text path. Yes. Uh, and I used it. Uh, yeah, I used that API a bunch of times. It's it's really cool. Uh, you can do very interesting effects with it. Because then then you know you can use the uh, there's the other API on on what is it uh, path measure. Uh, so you can like make it look like you're drawing the text, mm -hmm. by, you know, changing like the, the length of the path you want to actually yeah, yeah. render. So yeah, you can do pretty cool stuff with this get text path uh, API, and it's been on Android since API one. Uh, so it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Nice. Well, I mean, it makes sense because when you think about it, like font files, that's how they represent text as as paths. So yeah. It's actually, in a way, I assume it's almost easier to, to implement this API than rendering the text. Yeah, because you don't have to care about the the other mess that is rendering. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Do you know, uh, uh, you probably have an idea, but I was wondering if this, if the, the font has hinting, if this the, the path you get is the hinted path or the non-hinted path? Uh, that's a good point. I I don't know. I assume it's the hinted path, uh, but you know, yeah. don't take my word for it. I'm pretty sure like it's the the path that's returned, so that you know, if you draw that path, it would give you the exact same mm -hmm. result as calling draw text. Makes okay. sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have about five minutes, so. Unless there is any other question popping up, uh, I think we can start wrapping things up. Roman, is there anything, as you always say, as Chet always says on uh, the podcast, is there any question we forgot to ask? <laughs> uh, not, that can not that I can think of, but yeah, I would love for folks to try to use this and let me know how it works or doesn't work for them. Uh, and, you know, if you do file issues or if you have problems, like be patient because uh, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> there is no no time. <laughs> there's no time. Oh, yeah. I I feel you. 
<laughs> I hear you so much. <laughs> anyway, so but you can always say the the usual uh, pull requests are welcome. So, uh, abs- abs- I mean, absolutely right. Like, uh, I I would love to get some help on that. Uh, <laughs> but and hopefully, I, and I try to you know keep the code clean. And there's a lot of comments all over the place. Uh, yeah. So there is also ASCII art that was impressive, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a reminder. If you do open a pull request, remember to update the comments if you change something. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, yeah, I actually ran to that myself as I was, you know, updating the code and refactoring. Then I had a lot of updated comments. <laughs> Some of them may still be around. And there's awesome. a bunch of to dos, right? If you see a to do yeah. you'd like to fix, uh, be my guest. <laughs> yeah, you, you need one of those, you know, uh, nice, nice first. Commit nice yeah, first yeah, yeah. ticket. <laughs> it's a uh, trap. <laughs> it's a trap. It's like three <laughs> days of work. Um, I mean, uh, but... yeah, I wouldn't trust myself because even even for me, like you know, knowing the code and the complexity of text, like when I was thinking about ellipsizing, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do that because the API is a couple, of, uh, the platform is a couple of APIs. You know, it's gonna take me a couple hours. Of return. Like I said, I spent the evening on it, and I was like, you know what? Fuck that. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, it turns out the interaction, it's easy to make it work. And then you're making it work with a hyphenation and justification and multiple styles. And I was like, oh God, like <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit hole again. It's the rabbit hole yeah. again. Well, and actually, yeah. in, in my case, my, my life is made harder by the, the, the fact that. So when you when you had when you ellipsize right, you effectively either add the ellipses or replace characters in the line until you can fit the ellipses. But that has an impact. You you might be changing spaces, so that has an impact on justification. That's fine. It's like okay, let's let's change the justification. The problem is that if you have a shape that's like this, for me, a line of text may be split into multiple chunks of text that each have their own paint and justification that was computed. So what I need to I need to change my code to remember <laughs> a logical line made of multiple segments, so I can go back and go fix the justification. And that's when I went, yeah, fuck that. Let's delete the code. And <laughs> some yeah. Sure, sure. Ciao. I was like, yeah, ciao. The, when you say multiple, te- ciao, ciao. You yeah, just lost like, me. You know, so, you know what? It, it, I mean, it's uh, probably my family is missing me. Yeah, let's let's go back. I hear the baby kids, crying you know. in the other room. You yeah, know, there is at some point the, the dog. The dog. I need to walk the dog. Um, <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's what we do. That this is life, right? So, mm-hmm. um, Ivan, so, Sebastian. Let's wrap up. We have one last stream to go before the winter break. Yes. So who do we have? Who do so we have why do you always ask me questions I never remember the, the answer for? And also, why do I always forget to look this up before we start the stream? So next week. <laughs> there is a kind of that. So yes, there. I know, I know. Next week, we have uh, James Gatt, and we're going to be talking about AOSP. Uh, they've worked a lot with that. So uh, I think we're going to be covering uh, custom AOSP builds, how you build uh, Android for your own device and stuff like that. So it's going to be super interesting and also a good way to finish the um, the season before we go all on a break until the uh, 11th of January. I just double check. So we're going to be back on the 11th of January. Uh, next week, I decided that we're going to do a uh, giveaway because we haven't done it in a while because we keep forgetting. Um, it's not malicious. We just forget. Uh, but next week, we're going to be giving away a bunch of stickers, a keychain and a pin. So <laughs> be ready. <laughs> I also still don't have keychains. No, I do have keychains. Yeah, I don't I have the pins. I know, I know, I know. I need to prepare the packet. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know. I mean, shaming me live on Twitch won't make it faster. It's just that I don't have time. It's just that. I know, uh, I know. So, I'll, I'll open an issue as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, Roman, I, I, I really uh, thank you for for bearing with us. And well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope to... I hope I was clear enough. It's it's hard to describe the, the all the stuff that's happening in that code clearly, but yeah. Uh, 
It was uh, it was very cool. I'm very happy to have done this stream. I was so much looking forward to it. Um, so now that we've done it, I'm happy. I'm always happy when we Look, do text stuff. For once, stuff. we didn't talk about GPUs, so yeah. right. Well, we did we did talk about shaders, so mm. a bit. <laughs> tangentially. At some, some point, somebody also said the skier, so you know we we, we well... were on the we were on a slippery slope, but you know we managed. Um, <laughs> this close. Th thank you, thank you a lot. Thank you, uh, everybody in the chat, everybody uh, that is uh, with us on the live. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and like. It's important for us. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can support us for free. Just check the link in the description. And I guess... See yeah, you if week. you are a Bruschetta supporter, see you on the thumbnail making uh, meet in a couple of minutes. Check the Discord server. Yes. Bye-bye. Have a great one. Ciao, ciao. Bye, folks.